Test 23 Question 1. This sign tells you that A. No turns are allowed on the road B. The road narrows ahead C. There is a series of curves ahead The correct answer C. There is a series of curves ahead Warning signs are typically yellow with black markings, and they are used to alert drivers to conditions or hazards that are immediately ahead on the road. In this case, the sign warning about a winding road is telling drivers to be prepared for a section of the road that will have curves or twists. It's important to reduce speed and approach such areas with caution to ensure safety while navigating the winding road ahead. Question 2. A flashing yellow light at an intersection means you should. A. Slow down and proceed with caution. B. Come to a complete stop as quickly as possible. C. Stop and proceed only when the intersection is clear. The correct answer. A. Slow down and proceed with caution. When you come across a flashing yellow light at an intersection, you should reduce your speed and proceed with caution. Unlike a flashing red light, you are not required to come to a complete stop at a flashing yellow light. Instead, it signals that you should be alert and prepared to yield the right of way if necessary, but you can continue through the intersection with caution if it's safe to do so. Question 3. Which of these statements is true about drinking alcohol and driving? A. If you can walk in a straight line after drinking, it is safe to drive. B. If you are under the legal blood alcohol concentration limit, your driving isn't impaired. C. Alcohol affects judgment, which is needed to drive safely. The correct answer. C. Alcohol affects judgment, which is needed to drive safely. Being under the influence of alcohol can impair your judgment, and good judgment is essential for reacting appropriately to what you see or hear while driving. Even if your blood alcohol level is below the legal limit, any amount of alcohol consumption is likely to affect your ability to drive safely. Alcohol impairs cognitive functions, reaction times, and decision making, making it risky to operate a vehicle after drinking. It's safest to avoid alcohol entirely when you plan to drive. Question 4. Which of these statements is true about changing lanes? A. You only need to turn and look over your right shoulder for lane changes to the right or left. B. Look over your right shoulder for a right lane change and your left shoulder for a left lane change. C. Vehicles with two outside mirrors do not have blind spots. The correct answer. B. Look over your right shoulder for a right lane change and your left shoulder for a left lane change. Before changing lanes, it's essential to follow these steps for safety. 1. Signal your intention to change lanes. 2. Look in all your mirrors to check for nearby vehicles. 3. Look over your left or right shoulder to check your blind spot and ensure there is no vehicle, motorcycle, or bicycle traffic in the next lane. Question 5. A person may legally ride in the back of a pickup truck when A. The sides of the pickup bed are at least 24 inches high. B. The back of the pickup is covered with a camper shell. C. In a secured seat and while using an approved safety belt. The correct answer. C. In a secured seat and while using an approved safety belt. It is unsafe to allow a person to ride in the back of a pickup truck or any other truck unless the vehicle is equipped with seats, and the person is using both the seat and a safety belt. Riding unrestrained in the cargo area of a truck poses a significant risk of injury or ejection in the event of sudden stops or accidents. Therefore, it's essential to ensure that passengers in trucks are properly seated and secured with safety belts for their safety. Question 6. To avoid last-minute moves. You should be looking down the road to where your vehicle will be in about A. 5 to 10 seconds C. 15 to 20 seconds B. 10 to 15 seconds The correct answer B. 10 to 15 seconds To avoid making sudden, last-minute maneuvers while driving, it's important to scan the road ahead of your vehicle consistently. This means looking 10 to 15 seconds down the road. By doing so, you can identify potential hazards and obstacles well in advance, giving you more time to react and make safe driving decisions. This proactive approach helps prevent sudden surprises and enhances overall road safety. Question 7. If you see orange construction signs and cones on a freeway, you must A. Slow down because the lane ends ahead. B. Be prepared for workers and equipment ahead. 
C. Change lanes and maintain your current speed. The correct answer. B. Be prepared for workers and equipment ahead. When entering a work zone, you will encounter signs and message boards that warn you of various hazards, such as workers, slow-moving equipment, or closed lanes up ahead. It is crucial to reduce your speed and be prepared to slow down or stop as necessary when driving through a work zone. This precaution is essential to ensure the safety of both drivers and the workers in the area and to navigate any changes in road conditions smoothly. Question 8. U-turns in business districts are A. Always illegal because they are dangerous. B. Legal whenever oncoming vehicles are not a hazard. C. Legal at intersections, unless a sign prohibits them. The correct answer. C. Legal at intersections, unless a sign prohibits them. In a business district, you are generally allowed to make a U-turn only at an intersection, unless there's a specific sign prohibiting it, or if designated openings are provided for making U-turns. This means you must follow the rules and signs in place for U-turns and avoid making them at locations where they are restricted or unsafe. This helps ensure traffic flows smoothly and safely in areas with a high concentration of businesses. Question 9. If your vehicle begins to skid, you should A. Ease up on the gas pedal B. Brake as hard as possible C. Turn off the ignition The correct answer A. Ease up on the gas pedal If your vehicle starts to skid 1. Release the accelerator or brake pedal Take your foot off the gas or brake pedal. This helps reduce the skid's severity and lets your tires regain traction. 2. Steer in the direction of the skid, turn the steering wheel in the same direction as the skid. This helps align the tires with the skid's direction, making it easier to regain control of the vehicle. Question 10. When passing another car, you have enough space to return to the driving lane. A. If the other driver signals for you to re-enter the lane. B. If you look over your shoulder and see the past car behind you. C. If you can see both of the past vehicle's headlights in your rearview mirror. The correct answer. C. If you can see both of the past vehicle's headlights in your rearview mirror. When completing a pass on the road, it's essential to ensure a safe gap between your vehicle and the one you've just passed before returning to the driving lane. A common guideline for determining this safe gap is when you can see both headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. This means you've put enough distance between your car and the one you passed, reducing the risk of a collision when merging back into your lane. Question 11. Roads are slippery after it first starts to rain. When the road is slippery, you should A. Avoid making turns and stops while driving at high speeds. B. Test your tire's traction while going uphill. C. Decrease the distance you look ahead of your vehicle. The correct answer. A. Avoid making turns and stops while driving at high speeds. A wet, slippery road reduces the grip between your tires and the road surface. To stay safe when driving on wet roads. 1. Drive more slowly, since your tires have less traction, it's crucial to reduce your speed compared to what you would do on a dry road. 2. Avoid fast turns, making sharp or fast turns can lead to loss of control on wet roads. 3. Avoid fast stops. Slamming on the brakes can also cause skidding. Instead, brake gently and gradually to slow down or stop. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, ABS, apply firm and continuous pressure to the brake pedal. Question 12. You can drive off the road to pass another vehicle. A. If the vehicle ahead is turning left. B. If there are two or more lanes traveling in your direction. C. Under no circumstances. The correct answer, C, under no circumstances. You should never drive off the paved or main traveled portion of the road and onto the shoulder in an attempt to pass another vehicle. This practice is unsafe and against traffic regulations in most places. Passing should only be done on designated lanes or when it is safe and legal to do so within the marked lanes of the road. Using the shoulder to pass is dangerous and can lead to accidents. Question 13. Roads with double solid yellow line markings down the center indicate that passing is A. Allowed from both directions B. Allowed only from your direction of travel C. Not allowed from either direction The correct answer C. Not allowed from either direction 
A double solid yellow line on a road signifies that traffic is flowing in opposite directions, with one lane for each direction. It also indicates that passing is prohibited for vehicles in both directions. Crossing these lines to overtake another vehicle is not allowed, prioritizing safety and preventing head-on collisions. Question 14. You are merging onto an interstate highway. You should. A. Select a safe gap and merge into the lane of traffic. B. Merge across two lanes at once. C. Always stop before entering the highway. The correct answer. A. Select a safe gap and merge into the lane of traffic. When merging onto a highway, it's important to find a suitable gap in traffic that allows you to merge smoothly and safely. Stopping on the entrance ramp is generally discouraged unless there are absolutely no available gaps in traffic for you to merge into. In such cases, it's crucial to exercise patience and wait for a safe opportunity to enter the flow of traffic, ensuring a seamless and safe transition onto the highway. Question 15. Blocking an intersection during rush hour traffic is not permitted. A. Unless you enter the intersection on a green light. B. Under any circumstances, even if your light is green. C. Unless you have the right of way or a green light. The correct answer. B. Under any circumstances, even if your light is green. Even if your traffic light is green, you should only enter an intersection if you are confident that you can clear it entirely before the light turns red. Blocking the intersection can lead to a citation, as it can disrupt the flow of traffic and create safety hazards for other drivers and pedestrians. The key is to ensure that you can safely clear the intersection before proceeding, even when your light is green. Question 16. When can you drive in a bike lane? A. 30 minutes after sunset or 30 minutes before sunrise. B. On foggy days when visibility is low. C. 200 feet before making a turn. The correct answer. C. 200 feet before making a turn. When making a right turn, you can only enter the bicycle lane within 200 feet of the corner or driveway where you intend to turn. At all other times, you should not drive in the bicycle lane. This rule is designed to ensure the safety of cyclists who use the lane and to prevent unnecessary obstruction or interference with their path. Question 17. If you park facing uphill where there is no curb, set the parking brake and A. Turn your wheels toward the edge of the road. B. Turn your wheels away from the edge of the road. C. Keep your wheels facing straight. The correct answer. A. Turn your wheels toward the edge of the road. When parking uphill on a road without a curb, it's important to turn your front wheels to the right, toward the edge of the road. This way, if your vehicle's brakes fail, it will roll off the road and potentially prevent it from causing harm or blocking traffic. This is a safety precaution to minimize the risk of accidents or obstruction in such situations. Question 18. You must obey instructions from school crossing guards. A. At all times. B. Only during school hours. C. Unless you do not see any children present. The correct answer. A. At all times. Drivers should always be vigilant when they are near a school area and should pay close attention to the presence of crossing guards. It's crucial to follow any instructions given by these crossing guards without exception. Crossing guards play a vital role in ensuring the safety of students and pedestrians, and obeying their instructions helps prevent accidents and promotes the well-being of everyone in the vicinity of the school. Question 19. If you are involved in a traffic collision, you are required to complete and submit a written report to the DMV. A. Only if you or the other driver is injured. B. If there is property damage in excess of $1,000 or if there are any injuries. C. Only if you are at fault. The correct answer. B. If there is property damage in excess of $1,000 or if there are any injuries. When a collision leads to death any minor or major injury, or causes more than $1,000 in damage to anyone's property, each driver involved must submit a report to the Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV, within 10 days. In certain situations, the driver's insurance agent, broker, or legal representative may also file the report on behalf of the driver. This reporting requirement helps authorities keep track of serious accidents and ensures that necessary information is documented for potential legal and insurance purposes. Question 20. Two sets of solid double yellow lines that are two or more feet apart. A. 
may be crossed to enter or exit a private driveway. B. May not be crossed for any reason. C. Should be treated as a separate traffic lane. The correct answer, B, may not be crossed for any reason. When you encounter two sets of solid double yellow lines spaced two or more feet apart on the road, they are considered a barrier. It is not allowed to drive on or over this barrier, and making a left turn or U-turn across it is also prohibited, except at designated openings or areas specifically marked for such maneuvers. These barriers are in place to separate traffic and indicate restricted areas where turning across them can be dangerous or prohibited by traffic regulations. Question 21. When you approach an octagonal sign, you must A. Slow B. Stop C. Turn The correct answer, B. Stop An octagonal, eight-sided, sign is a universal symbol for stop. When you encounter such a sign, you must come to a complete stop, yield to any traffic and pedestrians that have the right of way, and proceed only when the way is clear and it is safe to do so. Stopping at these signs is crucial for road safety and to avoid potential accidents. Question 22. This white sign means you. A. May turn left only on a green arrow. B. May turn left on a green light when it is safe. C. Must wait for the solid green light before you turn left. The correct answer. B. May turn left on a green light when it is safe. A left turn yield on green sign means that when making a left turn on a green light, you must slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary, allowing any oncoming vehicles, bicyclists, or pedestrians to pass before you proceed with your left turn. After yielding to others, you can then follow any additional directions or rules indicated on the sign. Yielding ensures safe left turns and prevents collisions with oncoming traffic or pedestrians. Question 23. Which of the following statements is true? A. Driving too slowly is not an unsafe practice. B. Driving too slowly on certain highways can be dangerous. C. The speed at which you drive a vehicle does not affect safety. The correct answer. B. Driving too slowly on certain highways can be dangerous. Driving too slowly can pose dangers on the road because it may lead to frustration among drivers behind you. When others become impatient. They may attempt risky maneuvers to pass your vehicle. To enhance safety, it's best to drive at a speed that matches the flow of traffic and stays within the legal speed limit. This helps maintain a predictable and safe driving environment for everyone on the road. Question 24. When you see this yellow sign, you should A. Always stop at the crosswalk. B. Stop at the crosswalk until a crossing guard signals for you to go. C. Be prepared to stop if children are in the crosswalk. The correct answer. C. Be prepared to stop if children are in the crosswalk. A five-sided sign indicates that you are approaching a school zone. When you see this sign, be alert and prepared to stop if there are children in the crosswalk. The sign serves as a warning to drivers to exercise caution and watch out for students who may be crossing the road. Question 25. A red arrow pointing to the right on a traffic light means you may A. Turn in the direction after slowing and checking for traffic. B. Not turn in the direction until the light turns green. C. Turn in that direction after you come to a complete stop. The correct answer. B. Not turn in the direction until the light turns green. A red arrow signal indicates stop. You must come to a complete stop and remain stopped until either a green light or a green arrow appears. It is crucial not to make a turn against a red arrow, as it signifies that it is not safe to do so, and you must wait for the signal to change to green before proceeding with your turn. Question 26. You are on the freeway and traffic is merging into your lane. You should A. Make room for the merging traffic, if possible. B. Assert your right of way by driving faster. C. Always maintain your position. The correct answer. A. Make room for the merging traffic, if possible. When it's safe and traffic conditions allow, it's courteous and advisable to make room for other vehicles to merge into your lane. This promotes smooth traffic flow and helps prevent congestion or unsafe merging maneuvers. Being aware of your surroundings and being willing to accommodate merging vehicles contributes to overall road safety and efficiency. Question 27. At an intersection with a yield sign, you A. 
must yield the right of way to cross traffic that is close enough to cause conflict. B. Must yield to vehicles only on your right. C. Should slow down but never stop. The correct answer. A. Must yield the right of way to cross traffic that is close enough to cause conflict. When approaching a yield sign, drivers must yield the right of way to any traffic that is already in the lanes they intend to enter or cross. While drivers should be prepared to stop when approaching a yield sign, they may proceed without stopping if there is no conflicting traffic. In essence, yield signs require drivers to be cautious, slow down, and allow other vehicles to pass before entering or crossing the road, but they only need to stop if there's oncoming traffic that has the right of way. Question 28. On a freeway, you should look farther ahead than you would on a city street. A. In order to see potential hazards early. B. Because it takes a quarter of a mile to stop your vehicle completely. C. Because it helps you keep up with traffic. The correct answer. A. In order to see potential hazards early. When driving on the freeway, it's crucial to be prepared for changing traffic conditions. Keep an eye out for signals from other drivers and anticipate various scenarios. Expect merging vehicles at on-ramps and interchanges, and be ready for sudden shifts in road conditions and traffic flow. Staying alert and adaptable is essential for safe freeway driving. Question 29. This road sign means A. Sharp turn to the right ahead. B. Upcoming sharp left and right turns. C. Winding road ahead. The correct answer. C. Winding road ahead. Warning signs are typically yellow with black markings and serve to alert drivers to potential hazards or conditions ahead. In this case, the sign warns the driver of an upcoming winding road. When you see this sign, it's important to adjust your speed accordingly, as winding roads often require reduced speeds to navigate safely. Being prepared for curves and twists in the road helps ensure your safety and the safety of others on the road. Question 30. You are driving on a freeway with a posted speed limit of 65 miles per hour. Traffic is traveling at 70 miles per hour. You may legally drive. A. 70 miles per hour or faster to keep up with the speed of traffic. B. Between 65 miles per hour and 70 miles per hour. C. No faster than 65 miles per hour. The correct answer. C. No faster than 65 miles per hour. In most California highways, the maximum speed limit is 65 miles per hour. You are allowed to drive at 70 miles per hour only if the speed limit is specifically posted as such. It's important to adhere to posted speed limits, as exceeding them can lead to traffic violations and safety hazards. Question 31. A white painted curb indicates A. A. Loading zone for freight or passengers. B. Loading zone for passengers or mail only. C. Loading zone for freight only. The correct answer. B. Loading zone for passengers or mail only. At a white painted curb, you are allowed to stop only briefly to pick up or drop off passengers or mail. This type of curb marking typically indicates a short-term stopping zone for these specific purposes. It is important not to park or linger for an extended period at a white curb, as it is meant for quick stops only. Question 32. If a vehicle is equipped with airbags. A. Seatbelts should still be worn. B. Seatbelts do not need to be worn. C. Seatbelts should be worn behind the back. The correct answer. A. Seatbelts should still be worn. Airbags are essential safety devices in vehicles that provide protection in the event of crashes. To ensure the best possible protection, it is important to use a vehicle's lap and shoulder belts in combination with airbags. Airbags are designed to work together with seatbelts to maximize safety by restraining the occupants and cushioning them during a collision. Using both seatbelts and airbags correctly offers the best chance of reducing injury in an accident. Question 33. When merging onto the freeway, you should be driving. A. At or near the speed of the freeway traffic. B. At the legal speed limit. C. More slowly than the freeway traffic. The correct answer. A. At or near the speed of the freeway traffic. When entering a freeway, you should aim to merge with the flow of traffic at or near the speed of the vehicles already on the freeway. However, if the speed of traffic exceeds the posted legal speed limit, you should not attempt to exceed that speed limit when merging onto the freeway. 
The goal is to safely merge with the flow of traffic while adhering to speed limits and avoiding abrupt changes in speed that can lead to accidents. Question 34. A curb painted blue means parking is A. Allowed for no longer than 15 minutes. B. Only allowed when picking up or dropping off passengers. C. For disabled persons with a special placard or plate. The correct answer. C. For disabled persons with a special placard or plate. A blue curb signifies that parking is allowed only for a disabled person or the driver of a disabled person who displays a placard or special license plate for disabled persons or disabled veterans. This designated parking area is reserved for individuals with disabilities, and others should not park there unless they meet the criteria and have the required permits or license plates. Question 35. When using a roundabout, drivers should A. Stop in the middle of the roundabout. B. Yield to traffic already in the roundabout. C. Yield to entering traffic. The correct answer. B. Yield to traffic already in the roundabout. A roundabout is a circular intersection typically without a traffic signal. It operates in a counterclockwise direction around a central island. To navigate a roundabout, drivers must enter from the right, yielding the right of way to vehicles already inside the roundabout. They then follow the circle to the right until they reach their desired roadway exit. Roundabouts are designed to improve traffic flow and safety by reducing the need for traffic signals and minimizing the severity of potential collisions. Question 36. This white sign means A. The railroad crossing is controlled. Continue at your regular speed. B. Look, listen, and prepare to stop at the crossing if necessary. C. Stop at the railroad tracks and wait for a signal before crossing. The correct answer. B. Look, listen, and prepare to stop at the crossing if necessary. When approaching a railroad crossing, it's crucial to take several precautions. 1. Look, scan for any approaching trains by looking both ways along the tracks. 2. Listen, listen for the sound of train horns or bells, which can alert you to an oncoming train. 3. Slow down, reduce your speed as you approach the crossing. 4. Prepare to stop, be ready to come to a complete stop if a train is approaching or if the crossing signals are active.